everybody, welcome to the Sleuth Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Amelie. How's it going, Emily? I'm good. How are you? Good. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year to everybody. Yes. Uh, so we're going to load up the chat uh, while uh, we uh, talk to the first question. We have a first question that we were talking about uh, that somebody left a little bit ago. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of questions. In yeah, a lot of questions. So of yeah, of yeah, yeah, kind of little pieces. First thing is uh, I have a problem with when I play the high register C, the flute, after a while when playing practice rolls out and I cannot play it. I think it's a balance pro problem. Yeah, probably. And where my thumb position is on my left hand, is the thumb position under the index finger supposed to be exactly vertical up and down or it can be slanted? But the left hand thumb doesn't hold the flute. It's no. the right hand thumb that holds the flute. That's so I it. don't know if she made, she mixed up right and left. Um, we did a video a while back about flute posture where it's pretty well explained. Yeah, the flute posture video is pretty, pretty yeah. good. It's true. So you can look, you can watch that video, but just, I'll still explain a little bit. So, um, you know, you have that, that metal, those two metal rods that make the flute want to go back. You, you, your problem you say is that it's going forward, but usually the flute wants to go back because it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's more heavy in the back. So you, you can try to find a good point so that when you put your flute up, even with no pinkies, just the just the thumb and the index finger, the thumb of the right hand and the index finger of the mm -hmm. left hand, and your chin, it, it's it's uh, it's held and because you don't want your fingers to hold the flute because your fingers have to move and uh, they're not going to be efficient if they're no exactly grasping on something. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what you have to look for. So the thumb for the thumb of the left hand. Well, your your uh, left hand, the, um, s the index finger will be curved a little bit and put under that second uh, second key mm -hmm. here. Then your thumb should be pretty, just like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Just as natural as you can. You don't want to make it, you know, bending it like this or no, just like that. Because if you bend it, you're going to, you're going to, you know, all these muscles here, they're going to overwork. Totally. Then you're going to have cramps. It's going to be quite painful. Oh, yeah. Only when I when I trill sometimes do I bend it, it goes faster. Mm -hmm. But whenever I just play normally, I keep it straight. So I, I do think it's a problem of, of uh, balance. What might help? Maybe a thumb port would help. You mm -hmm. put it, you know, you have your... Three keys here. The key on which you put your index finger of the right hand, you put the thumb port there. Might help you hold your flute easier. So maybe try that, and then come back to us and say if it helped or not. And uh, maybe you have a sub question, or maybe maybe you mixed up right and and left. I don't know, but yeah. So you have to uh, put your foot on your chin. That's one of your fulcrum points then your index finger here, then your thumb, and then it has to be held like this. Mm -hmm. The pinky of the right hand might help, but it's not, it shouldn't be necessary to hold your flute. And then you have a force going, your right hand pushes forward and your left hand pushes towards you. Okay, yeah. And then it gives, it gives a, it's like those two forces act against each other to hold the flute, instead of thinking of holding it up. You just bring it like this and you lock it. It's mm -hmm. easier. It's less work on on your uh, on your arms and on your shoulders because if you think up, you might bring it up everything and then tire your whole neck and your. So you just you stay straight and wide and like this. So I hope that helps. Um, Another question, yeah. And also your your um, embouchure. You shouldn't cover more than. Three, uh, one third to one quarter, but it has to be like one third to one quarter has to be covered, not more nor or nor less. You know, mm -hmm. pretty much that. That. Yeah. So, do you want me to finish that? Yeah, question? the whole thing. Let's do okay. the whole thing. Why not? So mm -hmm. now, um, so my thumb tends to be slanted about thirty degrees to the right. I think. No, just keep it straight. You know, like when you hold your hand like this, as natural as possible. Then. 
you have this thing going on but the thumb you know don't overthink it and push it uh, then when I play and then also where should then flute rest in the index finger yeah the flute rests on the index finger here this point then also when I play a F or even an E only in the middle register it does not sound clear like the other notes I play the lower octaves and higher octaves okay in this regard can you advise me as how to correct these two problems I would appreciate uh, yeah okay um, so those are fragile notes E F and F sharp in the middle register mm -hmm, totally they're fragile what I would do try to take your your favorite note your best note and then go to to, to the E you know oh go down yeah go to the yeah okay but they're fragile notes and what I try to do is I I visualize that I blow it more across the flute than in front for those notes it's a visualization so it's all visualization but, but it helps yeah you can try um maybe singing the notes and then playing it and then playing with while you sing mm -hmm. you know in the Moise book there's an exercise where you always go back to the E and you do all your notes you go E F yeah, the more, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Marcel Moyes book, yeah. Yeah, it's called, uh, is it here? Is it De La Sonority? De La Sonorité, yeah. Art et Technique, on Sonority, Art and Technique. Yeah, I don't know if we'll get to, uh, <laughs> but oh, where is it? There it is. It looks like this uh, on YouTube or on Amazon or wherever you want to I get it. I think him. page 16. Yeah. Yeah, page 16. Look at that. I'm you have a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> page Nerd. 16. <laughs> Nerd. Nerd. You have the exercise. On page 15, they show how to do it. There's three ways to do it. And that can help, you know. But really, you don't... Like, you just take your E and then go to F. And then go back to E, go F sharp. Go back to E and do every semitone like that going right. back to yeah, E. Right, yeah, yeah. So, like... And you can play it slurred by two. You can yeah. play it. writes it in, uh, in triplets so but however you want to practice it it's gonna you go back to your E all the time so you're gonna uh, get some you know you're gonna get more um, how do you say that um, comfortable on those notes I guess yeah you know I would practice it like that mm -hmm. that's how I practiced it when when uh, I was learning. When you were learning, yeah. yeah. It's a great now, way to learn. Then also, how long should I practice every day? It's not just about how long you practice. There's a lot of different things. It's it's about how you uh, organize your practice also. Yeah, and how you set your goals and all those yeah. types of things, yeah. I think you should have a little exercise for sound, like mm -hmm. playing all your notes, long notes, you know, all the, the, yeah, and just focus on your sound. Then you should have a little finger exercise, maybe a scale, an arpeggio. Um, you can make a, a graph with all your scales you want to learn and then put an X so you don't always practice the same ones. You, you go through uh, different scales because that person is self-taught, so you have to uh, be able to organize mm -hmm. yourself. Then maybe a study, if you know a study book, mm -hmm. and there's a lot online that are... What, which one? The, somebody asked that question just now. They, they were wondering, do you know any books for self-taught flutists? There are not many teachers where they are. They're in India um, or flute method books. Well, we're, yeah. we're making a flute method book that's coming out soon. Yeah. But there are other books. And but there's, setting but up... Honestly, I, I'm writing it because I think... It doesn't exist. Yeah. For self-taught. Because in flute, you have, you have a lot of... Uh, you have one book for your sound and then one book for your technique and then so what we're trying to do is a book where you would have everything organized for you already by the week almost right you have yeah. it like on a weekly so like you practice one thing it says so week for, one and then week yeah, two yeah first or, lesson or lesson one because maybe it will take you three days maybe mm -hmm. it will take you two weeks it doesn't matter yeah so when you master that you go to the next yeah. lesson so you have a sound exercise a finger exercise a skill 
maybe a, mm -hmm. it, a study. Well, it depends on the level, you know. Right. But everything's organized for you, so that's going to be very helpful. And there's even th things inside of, if you don't, if I'm not mistaken, like for self-talk loops to reinforce. There'll be reinforced exercises inside as well that they can constantly use throughout yeah, yeah. throughout and their like thing. The, the first book, I'm making it more like a week-to-week -week thing. Yeah. But the second one, I'm thinking of having a section that's sound exercise, a section that's mm -hmm. technique. But then have a, another part where I say do this one this week. For a week, for yeah, a for week, however many times, you know, yeah. So mm -hmm. that it's easy and you don't lose too much time figuring out what to do. What now. to yeah. do. And you want to practice and yeah. you don't know how, how to practice. You don't know what to work on. Yeah. A lot of people don't know what to work on, so they work on a lot of things or they work on... A lot of people work on what they are good at. Yeah. Instead of their weaknesses, which we all have. We have more weaknesses than we have good things, I think, sometimes when you're first starting out. Because you're developing, yeah, right? But you have to pick uh, one thing because you're going to... I know, but a lot of people don't pick... Well, yeah, that's what I mean, though. But they always pick the... I think some people pick the easy thing yeah, first. Yes, yeah. But I, I think it's about organizing your practice. Absolutely. So you do a little bit of, of each, you know? That, yeah, exactly. And um, also, it's more efficient to practice less more often than to practice two hours. Let's say you practice 15 minutes a day or... What would be 15 minutes a day would be an hour and 45 minutes mm -hmm. to do an hour and 45 minutes in one day. It's more efficient to do often, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think 30 minutes five times a week, five, six times a week is good. Mm -hmm. You should always keep a, a day where you don't practice. Mm -hmm. but it depends on your goals. When I was younger, I used to practice 30 minutes. Then I went up to an hour. Then I went up to three hours and five yeah. hours. And then went back down because I had mm -hmm. kids and life and stuff and but you know it's important how to how you organize it and to be focused when you do it so it's efficient mm -hmm. and you're not learning mistakes yeah that goes out to also another thing is um rich here and we'll answer Stephen's question uh next after this but rich uh, rich is asking how do teachers feel about zoom or skype lessons for situations where teachers are far and and few you know, yeah, you I just gave say, a Skype lesson yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. The guy was from Chicago. Yeah. And yeah. it went very well, I thought. Yeah, you do nice. them pretty well. I think they're really fun and you, you do them quite well. And it's uh, it's it's awesome. Yeah. You get to meet so many different types of uh, yeah. people. Yeah. It's, it's pretty great. awesome. There's a slight difference that, you know, when I teach uh, next to yeah, each next other, to be, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's easy to play together. Mm -hmm. um, Those are the things that are missing. Like, like play you together, can't so. because there's a little delay. So I yeah. can be like, let's play it together. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. But I can give the example and say then. Repeat. Play, repeat yeah. Repeat, mm -hmm. like that. I still see pretty well what's going on with the embouchure. If I don't, sometimes I ask to go on the mm -hmm. side if I want to see something on the side and stuff like that. But um, I think it's a it's possible. Oh, yeah. It's fun. You do it. And I think there's a lot of ways to teach that way that can really benefit plus i think eventually some ideas and some people can do and i've seen people do it is record examples of you playing and then send it via email so they can play along with you mm. off time as well yeah, so there's different things like that so many different ways yeah and you know yeah. like with my my students that i have here i write in their book what they have to practice so with him i send him an email yeah you know it's just, yeah yeah but it's all it's different but it's all i think it's it works i think it works yeah. well um, Stephen Hughes, he has a question that a and bunch also, of people... Oh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Are, am I mistaken? I think there's some universities that have full um, studios that are very well equipped so they can really do... But it's not Skype. Like, it's a... Uh, like, I think the Conservatory of Vienna, if I'm not mistaken, they have a thing like that and mm. they can teach... Uh, well, both sides have to have good internet. It can't just be one-sided, yeah, right? So but I think some universities have... Maybe. Things maybe like, like Coursera like like things I don't know. master classes maybe or something no, I think it's really, like really uh, interactive interactive yeah maybe I've heard of that yeah like maybe it's a not... test maybe it's a test thing because it's really it was hard a study they were doing yeah on how is it possible yeah. to do it because or... internet uh, depends on it has to be both sides if the other person's internet's really spotty it's gonna reduce well, the quality it's, it's still Skype but it's just about having yeah because I remember also seeing about piano lessons and they had different camera angles so you could see the hand mm. very well and then they they oh yeah. A big study, and they compared if the students live or the students that mm -hmm. they were teaching uh, remotely, if they were getting um, as much result, and they were. Mm -hmm. There was no, no uh, real difference. 
in the learning. Interesting. Yeah, but they had all those cameras on the hands. Oh, yeah. And then the teacher could be like, look at my hand. Right. And they were very oh, yeah. equipped from one university to the other, and they had all those cameras. And but stuff. was it live? Like, it was, was live, live? Yeah. yeah. That's it interesting. private lessons, you know, with interesting. kids. They, they did that study. I, I saw that in a very interesting. conference I went to a few oh, okay. years ago. Yeah. yeah, it must have been something that's a, like a test, you know. Like they were yeah. they were just trying it out. No, like scientific yeah. study with statistics and stuff. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, Steven, he says, uh, he recently got accepted to play at his uh, university wind ensemble, but he's a graphic design major. Um, he gets heavily nervous when he plays. How can I control my, his player anxiety? Okay. There's many things. Uh, breathing is a, you know, is a good way to, um, control your anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know I talk about that a lot recently, but... There's um there's an exercise a breathing exercise that's very easy. It's called cardiac coherence. You can write that on YouTube and then just do the exercise. And some people, I know someone who had a fear of um, of planes. She couldn't go in an airplane, mm -hmm. and she started doing that three times a day, and now she's uh, it's done it's gone you know mm -hmm. because from your brain to your heart there's two nerves that go from from your um, emotional brain to your heart mm -hmm. and that regulate one is more like a accelerator one is more like a like a break you know and when you breathe that way five seconds in five seconds out you breathe in through your nose out through your mouth for five minutes it regulates your heartbeats and it regulates your emotions so you have you have that so that's something you can do every day if you can do it three times a day i'm, I'm pretty sure that would help and regulate your emotions and then there's many other things you can do first if you're prepared it's going to be you know you're going to be more confident exactly um also you can you know you can play that you're confident if you have a good posture if you uh you'll feel more confident than if you are crunched up you know what i mean mm -hmm. sometimes what i do when i'm not confident i Imagine that I'm someone else, someone that I admire. And I just go and I'm this person, so I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm, it's not me, you know? Right. Or sometimes we feel, you know, because maybe you're a graphic designer, you have the, how do you call that? The um, imposter Sorry. syndrome? Imposter syndrome, yeah, sure. So oh, yeah. So maybe not being you. But yeah, pretending. Yeah, I remember you saying that before. You're yeah. Pahu, or you're, and then you go in and mm -hmm. you have that confidence because, and then at one point it's gonna mm -hmm. resolve it on its own. That's a really good way of thinking it of a, about I, it. Yeah, I think also just focusing on what you have to do, and not on on yourself. Right, because you're also yeah. I think because it's a wind ensemble. It's like even in an orchestra, but wind ensemble is even I think more fun in a way because you're all playing as a team and it's not just you by yeah. yourself you have a bunch of flutists so you're all playing together or you're, you know you're part of a wind section i think you're not uh, just there with the yeah you're not the there's no spotlight on you no. it's yeah. I, I always feel it's like a team building thing yeah. get to know your what i would like to do when i don't know people in those places or i get thrown into situations when i was young in wind ensembles is i got to know everybody and uh, that usually cuts the edge off a lot and getting to know people after like you know after the rehearsal go for a drink or hang out get to know people because yeah. then it just makes people more human because you're playing something that's very communicative and personal and if you're all kind of working together it kind of cuts the edge off a little yeah. bit too and it makes me think also when you say that also sharing your fear with your colleagues yeah because it just saying it oh you know i'm a uh, I'm a little I'm nervous, a yeah. I'm a, girl. I'm a bit uh, nervous, or just I'm a bit nervous yeah. about playing. Uh, just saying it might lower your yeah. your anxiety, might uh, trigger some compassion and empathy mm -hmm. in the other person, and then you'll feel like you're sharing something instead of feeling like mm -hmm. you have to prove something. Yeah, because you already got accepted in, you know? You auditioned, you got in. Yeah. Now I think getting to know people will, will break a little bit of the tension for sure, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's about you do your best, you know, and then what else can you do? You let it go, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's this. Uh, but for me, 
whenever I, I start thinking about what others are thinking or stuff like that, I stop myself right away. And then I focus on what I have to do because I have totally. no control over what people are thinking mm -hmm. or, you know, it's their thing. But mm -hmm. I have control over what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I control that I'm playing this, that I'm breathing this way, yeah. that I'm blowing this way and moving yeah. my fingers. That I can mm -hmm. control. So I focus on that. Mm -hmm. The other stuff, I try to block it out. Mm -hmm. Just it's a kind of mental discipline mm -hmm. to stop your... You know, the, the Buddhists, they call it the monkey brain that goes beep, 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 all the time mm -hmm. and disturbs us, mm -hmm. that monkey mm -hmm. brain that goes, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, nye, nye, nye. And mm -hmm. you have to shut the monkey brain, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And like one last thing would be like, you know, also rehearsals are just rehearsals. They're meant it's to true. get all the mistakes out, you know? So don't be afraid to make mistakes in rehearsal because that's what that rehearsal's for. It's to, you know, have a pencil, be like, oh, this happened here, mark yeah. it. And then that way next time yeah then. and then mm. uh then you get that edge that uh during a concert to just perform and say those things that you want to say with the group anyways yeah, yeah. um lenoa mabove like or Likona mabove i'm hopefully i'm pronouncing that right i'm so sorry does it matter which edition of flute pieces you play from because flute wouldn't need written fingerings like violin or piano yeah because there's well sometimes because there's some bad editions that are have weird on some pieces that have bad articulations and bad it depends, depends but like most of the time it's okay music, I would say. yeah there was always that there was always the uh like reineke um there's a sonata that's made by carl reineke and he um there's several editions of that sonata you know there's a galway edition there's a something else edition there's like 10 editions and they all have different slurs, slurs and articulation so you know i would try to just listen to recordings that you like and then try to find you know, a lot it's of websites now. It's romantic music, though, because usually we think about that for Baroque music, because mm. Baroque music, very often, um, you know, Baroque composers, they didn't write yeah, articulations. Yeah, none. But then you'll find some, you'll find some um, um, editions that mm -hmm. have those, and yeah, also they that have tempo them. marks, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. metronome, the metronome wasn't invented at that time, so those shouldn't be taken as literal it's a suggestion by the editor but if you buy your text u r t e x t, -E -X -T yeah. then you get the edition that's really only with the composer wrote as close as possible yeah exactly so it does matter if you want to really see what the composer wrote and then you can add your own because when you play baroque music you add your own articulations mm -hmm. there's a couple of rules but really you you add your own stuff and um, people used to know at that time what were the the tasteful slurs to put. Mm -hmm. If you had a scale going down, usually you would do by two, all types of things That's like that. It. If you had a, a, you know, but if you if you go towards editions that are urtext, u r t e x t, mm -hmm. then you'll you'll be you'll have what's closest to what the composer Poser, yeah. wrote in exactly. the music. Exactly. Huh. In other editions, you'll have what the editor wrote you might agree with it but then it's not your choice you no. don't know what's what so. hmm that's super interesting yeah hmm hopefully we answered that question for you um another question was uh saran isaac he says uh i have problems finding pieces for his level i usually can't find pieces for my level because i don't have any great flute any flute grade books also, Band Geek says sort of the same thing. What are some good flute solo pieces for grade two or three? There are th one or two flute grade books. Maybe you can find There's the a book. Suzuki? There's a yeah. There's three. Suzuki, has, Suzuki grades. has a flute book, and the Royal Conservatory of Canada has a book, and also the ABRSM, the British version, I guess. There's a okay. British version as well, and. Those are the cup. Those ones I know and I about. I think also if you go on the Conservatory of Toronto, the like Royal Conservatory, Conservatory of, of Canada, Canada, yeah, RCM, yeah, RCM website, you can see their syllabus. Yeah. And then you can see, let's say, your grade two or three, they have suggested pieces. Yeah, so they they use the word syllabus because people don't know that word when they're looking for pieces. The syllabus is the thing they call the book. It's it's yeah. just. It's a, it's a program, really. Yeah, I know. It's That's just, what I mean. Like, it's, it's so hard to find for some people because so they don't know that word. It's S-Y-L-L-A-B-U-S. -L -L Something like that, yeah. And um, you, you can find it online, and then you'll have suggested pieces for your level and uh, suggested, 
you know, when we were talking about how to organize your practice, yeah. that can be a way. Uh, yeah. You know, you can go there, but then it's it's longer. That's why mm-hmm. I'm making a book where you would get everything. With, it would be way uh, easier. Yeah, have a little package to be able yeah. to develop and then go out that way. But there's there's also a lot online that you can find. Mm-hmm. That is public domain. Oh, the pieces. Yeah, you can find... There's a lot of pieces. All Baroque music is in public domain. If you search hard enough at... uh, On imslp.org, you can... There's sheet music there for... And there's uh, flutetunes.com. Yeah, flutetunes.com. Yeah. So if you go on the syllabus of of RCMP, you find... RCM, yeah. RCM. (laughs) You find... Yeah, yeah, that's... uh, You find the... um, the pieces, and then you can find them cross, online. Yeah, cross, cross through that, yeah. Cross and, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but there's we'll a... book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that will be very helpful for yeah. people, I think. But yeah, for grade two and three, you know, those are, I don't know what grade level that is, but like for grade two and three is really low if it's out of 10. So like, I don't know. I would recommend Telemann, Fantasias. They're nice and fun to play. There's a lot of nice... Um, uh, Icicle is fun. As well, yeah, and... If you want something more modern, like Icicle is a really cool piece people play that is a very Icicle low level. Icicle is a bit higher than... There's, a, yeah, there's some higher. solo pieces as well, but I mean... The... By Robert Aitken, you mean? Icicle? Yeah, no, maybe not. No, maybe it's, not that it's one. Way more and then nice. there's uh, there's Bach, Bach's yeah. uh, CPE Bach and yeah. stuff like that. Little things. Broke yeah. music is a good place to start, like Telemann yeah. and stuff. Vivaldi, there's some really easy Vivaldi sonatas. You can find all, all, all those there. Um... What else is there here? We do offer Skype lessons. People are asking us. Um, we do offer Skype lessons. You can check us out at uh, info at thefluechannel.com. You can email us and we can tell you everything you need to know about that. And then what are the benefits of filling your cheeks with air? This person, Michael, or he's uh, seen professionals doing that. Probably circuit breathing is what they're talking about. Like, yeah, because uh, you shouldn't put air in your cheeks except if you're circulating. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just going to... Yeah. And all their instruments, they have pressure buildup, so maybe it's their trumpet. They've seen people doing like that, but, you know, like Dizzy Gillespie used to do the big puffy thing, but, like, but they don't the can't do it on the flute. Yeah, you can't really... Not everyone it's does not that. It's like yeah. a technique you teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, he was doing it that way, but... Yeah. I guess it's circular breathing. When you circular breathe, you put a little bit of air in your mouth, and then while you're pushing with your cheeks you breathe in through your nose at the mm-hmm. same time so <laughs> like dizzy not like dizzy gillespie that's what he said i'm so sorry that's because that's what i think of when i think puffed up air but yeah i don't put air in my cheeks I, I don't notice doing it if i do it at all no i, I try to keep i keep, keep a tube i keep a tube like it's a straw of air coming out and then through you know I think the tube analogy is a bit dangerous because it might make people go with their lips forward. Yeah, or a tunnel in the throat, like a tunnel, yeah, you know, you like. You don't want your upper lip to go. No, I know. I don't try to say the lips. I mean, like inside oh, my okay, body okay. is what I meant. Like yeah. inside my body, it's like a tunnel, you okay, know, yeah. a circular tunnel, oval tunnel. Because my cheeks, they kind of actually go in a tiny bit yeah, when I breathe in. Like it's I... a natural way. I don't even force. It's just natural. No, my cheeks stay in. Yeah, they don't. I don't put air. But yeah, you're probably right. It's probably someone who was doing certain yeah, thing that they saw. So. Yeah, yeah. It's an articulation, guys. When they articulate, oh, when they articulate, they puff out their cheeks. Like classical players or jazz players? I don't know. I think jazz, but I'm not sure because there's a bit of comments. I don't see why you yeah. puff your cheeks when you articulate. There's no, yeah. maybe you see that as air. Maybe it's the a movement in the mouth that makes the cheek move yeah. it, but it's probably not air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. You know, mm-hmm. maybe it's when the tongue is moving, makes the cheeks move. I don't know, because I don't see why you would put air in your cheeks when you articulate. Like, don't overthink it. It's just, just mm-hmm. go with your tongue there and let the air go out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name because it's in Russian, but they've been playing for 2.5 years, and many teachers said that they don't have a full sound and their embouchure is clamped. Do you have any advice for them? So you're too tight. That's what, yeah, clamped means like tight, I guess, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, probably 
try to keep your your um, lips just as natural as you can Ch put a mirror in front of you try to keep your lips neutral don't smile don't frown check how you are are you smiling or mm -hmm. frowning just mm -hmm. yeah. check straight. those things that's a good check checklist in the mirror then put your flute keep your upper lip close to your close to your teeth don't move it forward mm -hmm. and then just do the easiest notes first yeah just that and for a couple of minutes just play your easiest notes and keep it like that and then try to let's say it's a low g okay and then you play your low g and you look at yourself and then you try to keep it like that and go higher and lower and only use your lower lip your lower jaw to this this part you can move forward when you go in the higher register and a bit back when you go in the lower register but the rest doesn't move and keep keep it natural and not don't uh, don't tighten it as natural as possible and in the beginning if you can't play in the high register or the, it doesn't matter just try to keep it like that and move slowly i would i would start there and then maybe write to us again and tell us if it helped and maybe ask another question once you've done that you know mm -hmm. yeah let us know about it in the comments of this video when it gets uploaded Recomment and answer if you're watching still and, and uh, I, yeah. I think maybe maybe you just um, don't support enough you don't push you don't uh, put enough uh, resistance with with um, the support of the air and that's why you feel you have to make a resistance with your lips yeah so try the to lack of yeah put your hand on your belly and do the sound s like this yes and then you'll feel which muscles in your belly are, are moving. Mm -hmm. And even all around your waist, mm -hmm. in your back, and yeah. feel them. And then when you play the flute, you have to engage those muscles. Yeah. This way, you won't put, you won't use mm -hmm. these muscles. Because a lot of people, yeah. Because people, a lot of people you compensate to, yeah, by using, compensate yeah, by, with their, their mouth, mouth, which it shouldn't they be. Should yeah. really use their the, body. The yeah. muscles that mm -hmm. push the air out. Right. Exactly. So just go s -s 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 and touch yourself. Mm -hmm. Try to feel mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they are, and then when you play, use the exact same muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us know. Let us know uh, how that works. That would be amazing. And then we can reevaluate again. <laughs> um, Leno Lecona again. Uh, she's not sure. She says um, Nina Perlov. She wants to talk about Nina Perlov. Uh, she's known for her unconventional flute technique. Even though she is very good, do you have any thoughts on unconventional flute technique? I don't know about her technique that much. I watch a lot of her stuff, but I can't really understand. Like, what's unconventional? I I watched a couple. Yeah, of her I didn't me too. See it as unconventional. Yeah, me either. She does. Oh, I like. I thought she explained well. And me too. Yeah. She's, I yeah she studied saw, French. I yeah, agreed. me too as well. Yeah. But I didn't watch everything she did. But I what I saw, I usually yeah. agreed. She's a tall flute player, like a couple other people, like Alexa Still and Robert Aiken. They have different techniques than shorter people do. I noticed. Like they do a lot yeah. of they do a lot of turning because they're they kind of like surround the flute. So they do something different. I think. Of course, to be honest. if you have a different body type, it would be logical that. Yeah. Yeah, you would play differently because you have a different yeah. set of you know. <laughs> yeah, you you have a different skeleton. You have a different yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe maybe that's why they see because but it's true. Like Alexa, still you watch her play. It's completely different. Oh yeah. Watch that video with but you guys playing Maya, and it's two different types of just just the the hands of where everything is. Yeah, it's like that with every film. She's flute player, so yeah. tall. Yeah, she's very tall. Yeah. Like I barely get to my flute. Right, you know? and she's and just like, she's like, ooh, that's ah, easy. <laughs> easy. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I never really even I've known her for a long time, and I've never heard that somebody say that she has unconventional flute technique. No, so, I think she's. She uh, studied the French way. I yeah. she studied with Marion and all those people. Yeah. So. What we can Funny. see as unconventional, some flutists, they will play a little bit on the side. Yeah, sideways. Like yeah. I don't. No, I don't think she does that. No, but she doesn't. She's straight. Do yeah. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the sound. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, those little things. Everyone has little unconventional things. You know, if you look at uh, Rampal, he used to put his pinky under the G sharp. Oh, yeah. I used to do that a lot as and well. I would never teach that. Oh, yeah. You have to bring it back. But I look he does at it. him and does I'm it like, fine. oh, my 
my god it works and, and because it makes this tech i've heard him say it makes this technique faster when he doesn't have to use that key he pre-plans ah, he's like he i don't need to use it boom 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 and it's and like goes it back yeah up. when he has to use it yeah but it works because he has probably yeah. longer fingers like that as well because it, it got in the work. way a lot it got in the it's way not in the way for me because he's a big guy too he was a big guy too from whatever yeah. he was like 5 11 or 5 10 i think but yeah it all depends on yeah, it all depends yeah you know let's say a teacher would have told him you have to correct that and he mm -hmm. would have spent numerous hours working on that for what really his mm -hmm. technique was working sometimes we we put the we put so much effort in something that's not even broken you yeah know? it's working don't bother yeah. why would you change it if it's mm -hmm. working yeah exactly if it's not of course you yeah. want to change it mm -hmm. but don't lose your time to mm -hmm. do something that's not broken mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And yeah. I always try to think about that when I teach. Is it something that needs to be changed or not? Because you have great flutists like him that uh -huh. had unconventional little things. You oh, know? totally. But also I've had a teacher who said to me, well, yeah, but if you took all the unconventional things of all the great flutists, you wouldn't have a great flutist. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I thought, you, you shouldn't have too many of those, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're saying like, uh, yeah, exactly. They're saying like Nina, she puffs with her cheeks again slightly. And like, but yeah, it's, it's a thing like, also, when you get older, your body tends to thin out a bit. So your cheeks, like Alexa, she you can see that in her as well. She uses so much air blowing yeah. out. And she has a more percussive way of playing. But it's it's because of physics. Like, she wants those things to just show up mm -hmm. to the end of the hall. They want, they want, she was, and she's trying to propel energy. Type, yeah. Head is yeah, so much. Yeah, things, so many know? different things. Like, I already have big cheeks. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. You know, yeah. it's all a no, different, different chemistry. Maybe and like, some people use that to have more Exactly. They or, experiment, yeah. yeah. Just like anyone should. They should experiment. If they want to emulate, try different things. Because everyone has a different way of trying to get the same type of sound sometimes. You never know. Yeah, so, but, yeah. yeah with different body types. As yeah. you said, we get different results. Exactly. Different ways of doing things. Um, Is the tension of the upper lip something to work on consciously? No, no, it shouldn't be tense, and it should just it's stay involuntary. There. Yeah, it's involuntary. It's 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 almost an involuntary. Uh, it doesn't move. Like it's, it, I, it, don't use it. I don't use I it either. Yeah, I just leave it there, and I don't. I try not to move it too much. The, lo the lower lip moves a tiny bit. The, the muscles on the lower lip work way fast, way more than the upper lip, a lot. And it's also that in general. For me, if I use my upper lip, I can only use it going forward, and when I go forward, mm -hmm. I lose my sound. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't move it. I leave it there. But it, it can also depend if your, you know, my lower jaw is a bit back. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, I don't have a prominent jaw mm -hmm. in the front. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on how you're built, I guess. But for me, I don't, I don't move it. Because mm -hmm. it would mean bring it even more forward. That's the only mm -hmm. way it can go. It can't go back. Mm -hmm. So I mostly push the lower mm -hmm. one. But I guess, yeah. you know, with a different face different face like like you said with nina like i think somebody said because she's like i said nina's old like they're not old she's, not old. she's yeah, like right? they're like in their 40s but i mean like what i'm saying is that they're taller people so they have more elongated features uh -huh. and like people have thinner thinner cheekbones than other people so you can see different things than you would if you guys played exactly the same you wouldn't see what happens on you but you might see something that happens on her and her cheeks you know what i mean like you might see more puffiness you might you know what I mean? Like, it's so... Yeah. It all depends. Yeah, like you said, I yeah. like I have big cheeks. Yeah, that's why... Yeah, I'm exactly. A... That's what you said. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. maybe I don't need to puff. Uh, yeah. I already have big cheeks. I yeah. Know, you know, I, don't, I never studied that. Um, Here's another question. This, uh, yeah, exactly. No, no, me either. I'm glad you guys are that picky. Like, you guys yeah. get to see... We need more people I'll to check, understand I'll how people are going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Candice, she wants to know, why do band directors teach their flute players to sit with their flutes perfectly straight beside them? Because she sees many professionals playing at an angle. I've seen this so much in my life. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. It's a, it's, I think it's a visual thing. I huh? think it's a visual thing they, they to make things... Good. Yeah, they think it looks good. It makes everybody look... Because in band competitions they adjudicate those little things like presentation and everyone's you know military you know almost not military like but it's like military like everyone stands in a line but i think it's counterproductive because it hurts it's so unnatural yeah for the body for a flutes for a flute, flute player i don't know about the other instruments that much but for flute players yes 
No, it's not. It's not healthy. It's that's, not. <laughs> it's no, just not it's healthy. True. And your like, players will play better if you do it that way. If you focus so much on that, you're oh not gosh. putting your energy on the really important stuff. Yeah. And what's important <laughs> really is that the angle here yeah. stays the same. So if you if you bring your head down like this, everything yeah. goes with it. Yeah. You know. It's just you don't want it to go like that. Yeah. You don't want your flute to move and your head to stay still because then yeah. your sound will be terrible. Yeah. But it's just that. So when I go here, everything follows. Right. Because I don't want to lose the lose the angle of right. the embouchure. And being perfectly straight with straight angle, it's just it's causing tension here, yeah. here. For me, it's very difficult to move my right hand if I try. To like, oh my I gosh! Feel that my right hand is you're losing tech. Yeah, you're already losing speed. technique. Yeah, and speed. Yeah. I lose a lot of speed. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't think it's a logical thing. Yeah. It's probably a visual thing, but it, it's, I think so too. It's not helping the music. I don't know how that got through to people, but it has to be something like that. Yeah. Hopefully it's the a military thing. It's a military probably. thing. And probably in um, marching band. Marching oh yeah, band, marching band. It's totally that. Yeah. Band, you're so right. I did that in marching band, and we always had to be perfectly straight in line so we can all see when we're marching together in line because of our peripheral vision. Everyone had to be straight. If you had an angle, something could lose where they're seeing so you can see. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that helps. I think uh, try to play comfortably, you know, because... Yeah. yeah. Straight, but not like... Mm -hmm. Like, I'm quite straight. It's not mm -hmm. perfect, but it's enough, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, you go on. <laughs> Is wondering... Uh, they're finding some used flutes and I w they wonder what should they consider to buy when buying a used flute. Some say you should buy a uh, head as new at least. Is that right? Maybe the head joint, I guess? Oh. No. No. When you're buying used flute, try them before you buy them. That's the biggest thing. If you can't try them, try to go and find that exact flute at a Flute store and try it and see if it feels the same. If you can do that, if you can't, buying used is a big risk, you know, especially if you buy it online. I've had, stu I ha I've had a student who bought a flute online like that. He never tried and he got a very good flute. But that's a Yamaha 222 or something like that. Those are well, standard. They're standard flutes and yeah. you can't really miss, you know, they're pretty, they're built. Um, how do you say that? They're. Uh, built like tanks? No, oh, but like. From one to the other, you don't have that. Oh, yeah, there's no inconsistencies, no yeah. Inconsistent They're flutes. a very good copy, yeah. So he got, he got it cheap online, and mm -hmm. it was a good buy. Too. Yeah, there are some standard flutes that you can buy without hesitation, usually, if there's no, if the pictures are good and the pads are good. There's no, make sure you get to find a picture that has the pads, at least all of them, at least all of them, yeah. uh, if they're ripped or anything like that. You have to see because if they're all consistent. Very yeah. expensive to repair. Yeah. In order to see that, just make sure they all look the same. If one looks different, ask why it looks different. Ask for a close-up for photo. Um, dents are not a big deal unless they're big dents. If they're little dents, it's not really going to make too much of a difference. Like little dings here and there. It's not a big deal. Um, make sure you ask them when the head joint was replaced, the head core, because that core could come in and it's going to be dry. And then, you, you, and then it's just spinning inside the head joint and it's not... Yeah, you that happens have to a lot. To, to a repair shop and yeah, and do it. Change yeah, it they'll change you. it for you. It's not expensive to change the head joint or the head cork, the cork and the head but joint. When yeah. you buy a used flute, you can you buy the whole flute. You don't need a new head. Joint. No, 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 no. No need for that. You buy it all at once. If it's just the body, don't buy the body. <laughs> Try to find a flute that's complete. Yeah, whole flute. <laughs> yeah, whole flute. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The uh, so like the tilt angle when we were talking, we were just, I just want to go back to that thing about being in band. Really, like it's about them holding their flute perfectly straight. Well, you know, I always see it this way when I see them playing elbow up, play like this. But elbow up is terrible. It's terrible, right? Oh, I'm just saying that's what I used to see, and I think it's just a matter of like trying to Keep feel your comfortable. Elbows down because you want the angle. Yeah. With you want your your wrist and your hand to mm -hmm. be in a straight line as much as possible. It's not it's not really possible with the left hand, but look, I'm not I'm trying to keep the slant as little as possible. And with the left hand, with the right hand, it's pretty straight. Because mm -hmm. you know? if you're like this, any movement that's too too wide, yeah, you know, too it's going to restrict. Yeah, restrict so much movement, movement in like the fingers. Put your fingers like this, oh, yeah. and then oh. and then, just and, straight, oh. it moves and then like this, boom, better. super fast. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And also, it's for hurting yourself. Oh, yeah. You don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. So, Wrists are a very sensitive area. And a lot of people develop specific, like, problems. So don't problems. Your thing, your, Yeah. Like, you're not... You're not trying yeah. to uh, yeah. fly here. Like, I even see flutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Little chicken. I, oh, God. Yeah, I even see flutes that are that have the head joints bent at a 45-degree angle so that the flute goes like this oh. and it goes down. And then your hands are... And it your fingers are going even faster because I don't uh, recommend that for everybody, but it does work. And it's actually you something that works. Like I've that? tried many flutes like that. And oh, there's even I've flutes that... It. There's even flutes that have head joints that are in a triangle that go up and like this, and they can play the flute like this. Uh, like a, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't like that, but I mean, like I'm just saying, there's so many different ways. Yeah. But I mean, the, right, the 45 <laughs> degree one, I think it's 45 degree it's angle. It's a lot of yeah, yeah. Year, no? No, no, really, no, <laughs> not at all. I have that uh, belief. physics. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Yeah, your beliefs. <laughs> I play the flute straight, not in a triangle. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that answered your question. Um. Completely, yeah, they play completely straight elbows up and the flute straight beside them. No, no elbows. Yeah, no elbows. No elbows. Elbows up. just it's, resting down. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to have a lot of problems. A lot of people, 99% of people I've ever known that have had that have had problems. Like, yeah. if they continue doing that. So it's, it's, it, it's, it, it's not, yeah. your body's not meant to go no. like this. Just doing that, I already feel. Oh, oh I'm not, I'm, I don't want to do it again because it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, what do you get? Okay, so this is about a. Flute. I think we are going to review this flute, the Pearl PF five two five RE Quans flute, or Pearl flutes. Well, you did try some Pearl flutes. We will have that video out next week. We're going to do the Pearl one out. I think we did Pearl flute, huh? We reviewed. I, we, I don't know the number. I don't remember I think the number I tried either. Tried one or two when we went to New York. Yeah. So look out for that. That will be out next week. A Pearl flute that we, we but per, they were nice. All the flutes we tried oh, out yeah. were really great. Like yeah. flute makers now build really good flutes. Um, try as many as you can because usually. You know, it's like you have to find your your true flute, you know. Yeah. So try as many as you can when you try flutes out. Even try the same model sometimes a couple times because mm -hmm. upper ones, sometimes there's little changes and maybe one of them plays better than the other. So um, Gemeinhardt too, somebody said about the Gemeinhardt. Gemeinhardts are great flutes as well. You played, uh, we played a Gemeinhardt in the reviews as well. There was like a Crusader or Galway something, I a couple of things. It was good too. It was the surprising. New Gemeinhards, yeah. yeah. Well, Gemeinhards are good flutes too. Didn't Yamaha. They change owners recently or something? I don't know. That I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah. It was a higher model that we tried. Yes. It was, it was good. Yeah. They also make piccolos too. Gemeinhard piccolo is what you also tried yeah, as well. Yeah, I was surprised because I had a. That's in our three piccolo video, I yeah. think. I think. Yeah. And yeah. So if you guys have any. We'll answer a couple more questions and then. Um, if we missed any, let us know in the comments and we'll we'll go back to them. Oh, there was one I remember. Um, can you explain French tonguing? What is French tonguing? What is French tonguing? There's the American tonguing. There's the American sound, which has its own American tonguing, and there's a French yeah. sound and the French tonguing. I know, I know. American I school. I hear that all the time, too. American school and French school. Uh, yeah. Personally, I learned in Quebec, mostly. So I had teachers, Quebec is, uh, you know, it's like um, between France and United States, I feel, for the flute. because It's a, a big of, mix. It's a big mix, a for sure. Because a lot of flutists um, in the 50s and 60s went to study in France and in Switzerland. And a lot went in United States. So it's a little melting pot. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's, it's mixed here. Yeah. And I didn't learn like you know what i mean yeah. i had different teachers that studied in the united states and in france mm -hmm. and i did also master classes with american flutists and french flutists well uh i can explain tonguing the way i know it mm -hmm. um i guess you know you can you can tongue between your lips yeah there's that style as well of, mm -hmm. yeah that's uh personally i i I don't use it very often because um, it disturbs my embouchure. Yeah, because uh, using it like what it plays on like what would they give you an example of that? Because I remember, yeah, it's a bit more percussive. Right, yeah, it's more forward. And if I play just ta 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 between mm -hmm. the, um, <laughs> in the back of the teeth, you know, mm -hmm. you hear the, the the one in front is more percussive. 
the one in the back. You know. But a lot of French people don't really play with their tongue in between the lips. That I think a couple flutists they see that and they think it's that, but really, it's more. At where the teeth are it's where like i see a lot of french flutists and french style like touching the the teeth but a lot then, also there. yeah but I, less and less yeah and also it's it's because it's more forward and yeah. slower right so i only use it when i want something percussive and i have time yeah whenever i play a little bit faster i go back yeah that's more american like playing at the roof of the mouth a little bit like it's more but it's a mix, you know, Plus, like there's so you much. Can, you can use different sounds. Yep. So whenever, totally. you know, when I practice tonguing, I, I practice, let's say I go like this and I do. So I'll do it uh, one more like. Ta, 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 ta. Mm. And then I do a more slurred tonguing, you know, more like da, 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 da. Mm hmm. You know, my tongue is just, uh, how do you just... Like pet? Yeah, petting the, petting the roof the, of my yeah. mouth more than the ta 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 yeah. and then da 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 da. Um, it depends what I want musically, you know? Yeah. So, But what I think for tonguing is the most important is you need to have air going. Air behind it. You, you can put it anywhere. Air. on. You can have the tongue anywhere, but if you don't have the air, yeah. it's not going to make anything. The air is going out and then... Yeah. The pressure is there, and then the tongue goes and schlock, schlock, Yeah, it's schlock. just cutting it up. It's cutting the yeah. air. So yeah. that's what Different you ways. think about. And also, yeah. what really helps is when you think that the tonguing doesn't happen when you put your tongue there, but it happens when you release your tongue. So then your tonguing will be way more efficient if you mm -hmm. think the, the, the sound starts when you release the tongue. <laughs> yep. Then you. There's so many different I ways. I used to think of it when I put mm -hmm. my tongue there, and yeah. I was always. Oh yeah. It wasn't clear, and it was mm -hmm. a bit slow, always a yeah. bit late, not perfect. Not precise, thing. yeah. And then when I started thinking, when you release the tongue, then it became way. That's more when precise. it gets go. That's where the air. It's just physics. The tongue is now going up. Then it releases the air. Yeah, and then the air <laughs> starts. Yeah. And then when the air gets there, that's the schluck, schluck, Yeah, schluck, and you gotta have yeah. so much momentum to be able to keep going after it's been stopped by the tongue. <laughs> So that's that's it. But there's you know, no yeah. Even for the takata, you can yeah. taka takata. That's a bit more yeah. You know, and then you can go daga daga da. Yeah, there's so you many know, different that styles. Are a bit more close to each other in the mouth. Yeah. Daga daga da. Taka 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 da. Daga daga da. Taka 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 da. Yeah. You know, it's all those different sounds, but it's about when you release and the air goes. So that's how I see tonguing. Yeah, I wouldn't French, restrict. Yeah. American. I don't know. For yeah. me, it's just the air goes and the tongue is yeah. there. I don't know how you can do it. I wouldn't, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't restrict, I wouldn't try to have, if you had somebody telling you one, there's only one way to tongue, I don't think there is. I think there's many different ways to experiment to get different types of sounds because we, we, we're in a world to, that there are pieces that, a Baroque piece, you can't tongue the same way in a Baroque piece as you would in a modern piece. Well, if you play Nielsen and you play Bach, you're not going to. You're not going to tongue the same way, way at all. Go, there's so many, yeah, there's so many, that's what I mean. Gonna, there's so many different ways. Totally right. Yeah. So. Don't just think if somebody's saying that to you, it's a it's a big red light to me. Well, no, it's just it's just it's a thing everyone says, but I personally don't really. Get I don't it. say that. That's the thing. I don't get it, so I'm not. But really, a lot of you know. a lot of people yeah. say, "Oh, American right. uh, tonguing and French tonguing," and just drives me wild because I haven't heard that somebody say the French tongue like explain French tonguing in about ten years. I'm and I'm surprised that they still talk about those types oh, of no. things. Oh no, people say that still a lot. I know, but it's just yeah, it's but... surprising to me. Because, uh, you know, we all have the, it's the same, the same physics, you know, behind yeah. it, it's the same. Yeah, the approach. But it, the tongue is just a, a gate, you know. But I think also, tonguing is, uh, the language you speak might have a little influence on, on the way you're going to tongue, because that's, the dif different muscles in your tongue and your mouth will be stronger or not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the, the tongue you're, you speak, I guess. Mm. You know, mm. you would have to ask mm. a speech therapist, but I'm pretty sure because they say after a certain age, if you learn a language, you'll always keep a little accent because your your muscles are not trained to do those sounds. That's it. So that's maybe that's a little bit why people think there's a French tonguing and an American tonguing. Maybe that's 
different muscles that are stronger mm. if you speak one language as a first language or the other. Or the other. But in the end, it's the same air pushing and the tongue is just cutting it, mm. you know? Mm. Um, so we'll close off the, the podcast for today. But uh, last, I just want to ask is uh, for everybody and for us as well, like it's 2018, we have goals. If you guys have goals, uh, let us know uh, in the comment section, what are your goals for this year for playing flute? Do you want to learn a new piece? Do you want to have a concert? Anything. And uh, I know for us, it's about making more videos, <laughs> but uh, finishing, the book. finishing the book and also doing some concerts. And um, hopefully we'll do a live concert here gonna try to do something this year and do an actual full live concert on the channel with you playing and some fun stuff like that and then yeah just playing more you know yeah. playing more and, and setting up stuff is what i think i would i'm when i have planned for this year and practice more a little bit and uh yeah so let us know in the comments let us know what your goals are and it was great answering all your questions and uh, we do this every uh every two weeks so we'll do the flu podcast again in two weeks and stay tuned for next week we'll do a just practicing as well and we have a couple of videos released this week we're going to release uh, at least two or three videos this week again and uh, yeah i will talk to you guys later uh, i'm nick and i'm Emily. see you guys later cheers Thanks bye for watching bye